It's November 20th, 2018. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. And in this episode, I wanted to do something f for somebody who's just starting. Go back to uh, an episode on a very basic sort of episode. And I was looking for some music to talk about. And I thought, well, it's getting into December almost. Why not maybe some Christmas or, or winter themed music? And so I ended up doing this little arrangement of Deck the Halls. And you can get the sheet music, by the way, if you sign up for my email newsletter, um, you can get the sheet music. And this is just a, a nice little setting of Deck the Halls, or Deck the Hall. So it was interesting to go to Wikipedia and read about the history of this piece. It's a, the tune is a traditional Welsh tune that w was about this Nos Gallon, if that's at all the correct pronunciation, about New Year's Eve. So again, a, sort of a winter celebration piece. And closely associated with a harp because Apparently, the first manuscript that they found with this tune, though it may have, of course, been something that he copied from earlier on, was by the harpist John Perry, and that the first printed manuscript version of this tune was by another harpist, Edward Bunting, uh, not Edward Bunting, Edward Jones. And that's actually the what I'm basing this off of. You can see the, the, the uh, a JPEG of, the, of that manuscript. And anyway, so... Uh, Deck the Hall or Deck the Halls is is a lovely little tune, right? And I wanted to just this this little arrangement offers some some interesting things to look about and and to talk about. So and hopefully you should be seeing the the music and me pointing to it here. So um, first of all we get a repeat on these first four, four bars, and I'm not always sure whether I like repeats it, it is someone who's reading music. Sometimes it's nice not to have the repeat and just to have another line. But a repeat is a great reminder for us that it is a repeat, that we get to just play the same thing again. Whereas sometimes maybe we don't notice that something's repeating. It's always good to be aware of these little patterns. So this is a piece with a lot of, a lot of interesting things going on in the right hand, sort of connecting things. So let's talk about what the right hand's doing at the beginning. We're in the key of G. We find one, two, three, four. All right, find all of them. Great, got the bracket over them. And then we're coming off with a dot. Now, lots of other fingerings we could use. These are the fingerings that felt best to me and that I've chosen to use. Of course, don't feel locked into those. Um, and now we're gonna be, for a long period of time, we're gonna stay connected. I should have put a dot over there, I notice. Yeah, okay. Oh, I did hear but I didn't move it up high enough. Well, I'll tidy that up in the, in the version that you can download. Um, we find three, two, one, right? And now we're gonna put the fourth finger on that G we just played. So we wait, right, bracket over these three. We, so we have, before we play any of them, we have to find all three of them. Overlapping bracket. So now, before we can play the thumb, it's part of this new bracket, we have to place the fourth finger, just the fourth finger. Four is part of another bracket, four, three, two, one, and it's a scale, right? Four notes in a row. And now slightly quicker. Oh, this thumb is part of a new bracket with one and two. I have to put two on the A. And then a new bracket, thumb to the B. So this then is a perfect opportunity to kind of work a small section, right? And it's so helpful to instead of just going through the whole piece many times, to work small sections. Of course, we might read through the piece, especially if we don't know the tune. In this case, probably we do. We might read through the piece to try to just discover what it sounds like, get a little bit of a handle on things. But then it's so helpful to really do some in-depth work on something like So, getting used to placing that fourth finger right on that G that we just played with the third finger. And then this little, so you could just practice this three, two, one, two, one. Right back to the A that the third finger just played. And the thumb kind of walks down one, right? Trying to get that feeling really good. If we go back to the beginning. And then we finish it off with, I ended up finding it 
For me, it was most comfortable to put that two back on the G. You could absolutely go to the thumb. It's just every time once we finish there, whether we're going on or whether we're going back, we're moving up quite a bit. So it's actually handier to have two here and the thumb ready to go to this D or to this C essentially. So let's try that again. So one, two, three, four. Long extended section where we're connecting. Here's this three, two, one, two, one. And one, two, three. Let's look at the left hand because sometimes maybe it feels great with the right hand, but actually we should be practicing with both hands because the left hand throws in a bit of a, a bit of a monkey wrench and, and makes it harder for us to feel comfortable. So I've tried to keep this left hand as is, is simple and yet hopefully sounding you know reasonably good as possible. We have a bunch of fifths, right? So if, if you if you found root position chords, right, where you're skipping every other string, this is the same except we're not placing the second finger just there nice and relaxed. So good opportunity to make sure that it's not up like this. That it's just hanging down, almost touching the, on the back of the finger, almost touching the strings. And we just get a nice full close with that third finger. I'm just demonstrating with the right hand so you can actually see, sorry, because of this camera angle. Um, nice full close and nice sound. Maybe a little bit of a wrist movement and an arm movement to bounce up and then come back down again. We play another one of them. Then we go down to the D, we get another fifth. Now, this gets a little bit trickier because we're, see the bracket, we have to place four, and I'm suggesting three and one. This is a one, four, eight, if that makes sense. Don't worry about it if it doesn't, in terms of the shape. And you'll notice there's that fifth again. That's the same fifth we started with, this G and this D with three and one. It's just replacing the fourth finger on the D. And if this feels like a stretch, one of the things to be aware of is just kind of moving this third finger. It can bend, so instead of trying to be straight and make this reach, we can bend. We can even have the back of it. We're not, we're, we're not playing this F. We can have the back of the finger up against that string. So we find this and we're gonna play four first and then this, this chord. So let's try to put it together. Let's see how this first little bit feels. That should feel pretty good. They both come off. They're both gonna find some notes again. So now while the right hand is getting ready to do all this connected stuff, left hand has to be kind of moving down. It's not gonna be at the same chord. It's moving down a little bit and then be ready here. The rhythm potentially is a little bit tricky because we have one and two and three, nothing on the and, four and. So we've gotten used to eighth note, eighth note, eighth note, eighth note. This will essentially be a quarter note and then two more eighth notes, All right? So the rhythm is one and two and three, sorry, one and two and three, four and one. Right? Uh, tick, 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 boom. So there's that one little bit of a little bit of a pause. Um, so if we go, you know, if we're, if we're kind of stomping our feet and, and feeling this beat, if we feel that quarter note beat, right? One, two, and three. Four and one, two, three. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three, four and one, two, three. As we repeat, great. And again, trying to trying to get these little little bits. Or how about? Let's talk about the next line. So now this entire line, the right hand, is staying connected. We find three, two, one. Fourth finger, right? The, before we play the thumb, we have to place the fourth finger. It's on that A that we just played with the third finger. So we've got the fourth finger on the A. Before we can play it, it's part of this longer bracket. We find three, two, one. Just a scale going up. Four notes in a row. 
And once we've played that, we're now the same as this bar, right? The same kind of rhythm, but instead of starting on an A, we're starting on a B. Oh, but again, we put the fourth finger back to this A. And again, before we play the fourth finger, we place three to one in a scale. So apart from the fact that these three to one starts on an A and this three to one starts on the B, and that the rhythm here is, is a little bit different, we're doing the same thing. <laughs> apart from what we're doing differently, we're doing the same thing. So. Right, and now we're ready to go three to one. Cross the third finger under. Three, two, one. Before you play that thumb, we have to place two, three, four. Certainly possible that you may want to come off on some of these places. It's also something to remember that is your it, it, maybe as you're initially learning it, you're like, oh, cross under, that's hard, or oh, having to place all two, three, four before I play a thumb. I want to go play the thumb and then find these. And that's true, right? It, it does, it makes it a little harder to make this as fast as we might want it. Sorry for the jostle on the camera. Oops. As smooth as we might like it by replacing. But if we can get it um, comfortable, it just provides a, a little bit of extra security. It makes it actually faster because we have those placed. I don't know, again, I can certainly There's nothing wrong with coming off, but for me at least, it feels best to connect there. So let's look at this again. Right, so fourth finger, fourth finger again, cross under, replace. Hey, not so bad, right? Again, I think it actually fits really nicely under the hand once we learn it, right? And, and so just trying to do, see if, can that feel good? Remember that even though this has gone up, we're still going back to that A here. Um, right? And then this little, it's a scale, but it's an easy scale because we don't have to play that third finger immediately, right? We cross it under, but then we have time to sit up three, two, one. Let's look at what the left hand's doing. So it's finding some fifths again, but this time just to make things interesting, it's playing them three and one. So one after another, a little bit of an arpeggiated. And it's going one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. So let's see how that sounds, right? And here's that D, and here's the G. Here's that same G fifth that we found, and the same D fifth that we found. Right? One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. Oh, here's that same G fifth. We just played this, with same notes. And not a fifth. This is a third. That's middle C and E. Makes sense with what the right hand's doing. I put in courtesy reminders. Sorry to the ledger lines. I originally had this in F booted up to G. Makes it even harder to read, but I think more, not everybody has a, uh, more people have F levers than people who have B levers. So anyway, a little more accessible, I think. This is another third A to F. For me, I found moving this bar into treble clef and then back to bass was actually more confusing. Um, your mileage may vary. But again, I put those courtesy reminders of the notes there. Let's try that again. Cool. So this left hand, fifth, fifth, repeat the fifth as a chord. This third up here, find this third here. Great, let's try that one more time. Now, 
now we're back. This bar is the same as the beginning bar, right? This should feel pretty easy. We don't have to keep connecting. It's just one, two, three, four. Excellent. And here, this is the same as the second bar. But almost the same because now before we play that fourth finger, it's a different bracket. So this bar, normally we're used to hearing, I'm oh, sorry. bother me a little bit just because it's hard on the harp to do repeated repeated notes especially especially when they're fast because we're stopping the same string and because you know on the piano bounce 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 or, or various wind instruments or whatever but um, this it's so much easier when we're connecting right whereas we and we have to come off and play that same note again it's just hard to be quite as fast so it's interesting to see here in this again this is from was it 1780 something i don't know i don't know uh, I'll, there'll be the link to the wikipedia page on this in this the, the tune instead is so we have same ending is here right slightly different left hand we'll talk about it in a moment so kind of fun if you want to substitute the e e e e d and then just down in the scale, C, B, A, excuse me, G. But let's look at this. So if we go from here, so now we're placing three on that A, as we did here, but the thumb is going all the way up to the E and we're not placing two yet, right? Four, three, one. Find two and one here on C and D. And then, okay. Now we have to find, here's a root position, right? Skipping every other string, root position A. Sorry. Thumb. So let's look at that a little bit, because this is a spot to, especially to practice with both hands, right? Because this, that might start to feel pretty, pretty good, but once we throw in this left hand, especially if it's connected, and we could come off each time, but I think I, think I like connecting there. Um, it just is one extra thing in terms of, okay, what's hands, fingers playing next? Which direction are we going? What's, what's, ah, what's going on? So um, if we start from this pickup, right, two's not on yet. It's just hanging loosely right there. And we could maybe, right, find, practice finding two and three on this root position chord. All of this actually really does fit very nicely under the hands once we learn it but that's maybe a, one of the more challenging spots especially because it's not exactly how we are used to hearing the tune and at the end the right hand still doing but to spice things up a little bit the left hand you know how we found this shape over here it's this same shape d and then this fifth three and one on g and d again so right Cool. So the whole thing. And of course we could go on and, you know, you could mess around with doing, you know, Playing that on beat two. Or you could do this. No, sorry. You could, of course, have fun making it your own. But it's also, I think, just a lovely, lovely little setting of, of, this, of this very happy little tune and fun to see how fast you can get that going and a nice piece i think for especially if you're sort of just kind of tackling long connected sections and and, and fingering and again i think this does hopefully 
feel nice under the hands once you get everything learned. And again, doing small sections is a great way to tackle that. So um, hope you've enjoyed that. And uh, I will see you in a couple weeks. Thanks for watching. Cheers.